In this lecture, we'll discuss how to use two-dimensional arrays in Visual Basic. One-dimensional arrays are really nice when we want to represent our data as a list, which we've been doing up to this point. We'd have a list of strings, a list of numbers, and we can just store it in an array without too many problems. But there is another type of array we can use. We have a two-dimensional array, which is great when we need uh, to represent our data as a table, or if the data that we're given is represented as a table. So the way this is structured is we now have rows and columns for our data. That way, whenever we try to access a particular element, each one is going to correspond to a specific row and a specific column. So we can see, as, as we'll see when we create our two-dimensional arrays, we would use the number of rows and number of columns for specifying the dimensions. And then whenever we access a particular element, we would need to specify the exact row number and the exact column number to get that particular value. Now, you might be thinking, why are two-dimensional arrays useful? Couldn't we take a two-dimensional array and represent it as a one-dimensional array? Yes, we can. We can take any data and represent it as a one-dimensional array, but there are problems with that. So let's look at an example where we can see this situation. Let's suppose uh, we have a table of data instead of our list. So maybe we're dealing like just for example, first quarter sales at a business called Electronics R Us. Now I actually had to look it up. This store does exist in a couple of places in the, the country the more you know, right? Anyway, here's some arbitrary data. This number, these numbers are made up. Uh, so let's say we have a business here where they're selling desktops, monitors, laptops, tablets, phones, and so forth. And these are the sales for January, February, and March. We could represent all this data using a one dimensional array. The problem with this though, is how do we organize it? Do we put all of the desktop sales in first, then all the monitors, then all the laptops? Or do we put in all the January sales first, then the February sales, then the March sales? So we have a couple of ways to decide how we want to organize everything into one list. And then accessing a particular item is gonna be tricky. Like what if I want the February sales for tablets? How would I do that in a list? Since each index corresponds to just a number from zero to however many numbers, uh, however many things we have in here, minus one, of course, it's going to be a little difficult to map an index number with a specific row and a specific column. It can be done, and there are applications where it is useful to take a two dimensional array and convert it to a one dimensional array, at least to save up memory space. But for most purposes, for that, what we will be doing, it's a, it makes more sense to take a data take data that's represented as a table and store it in a two-dimensional array. So how would we go about declaring a two-dimensional array? Well, fortunately, the approach is very similar to how we would declare a one-dimensional array. Uh, the only difference is when we have our parentheses, beforehand we would just put a single number in the parentheses. What we're gonna do now is we would have two numbers in the parentheses and we would have to separate it with a comma. So our first number would represent the number of rows in our two dimensional array. And then the second number would correspond to the number of columns in our two dimensional array. Now we gotta be careful, even though they represent the, the rows and the columns, they wouldn't be the exact numbers of rows and columns. Just like what we did with one dimensional arrays, each number would represent the last index of the dimension, not the size itself. We'll do a couple of examples in just a bit, but just to give you an idea, if I had something like three comma four, that means the last index of the number of rows would be three, which means there are four rows. And then four for the second number would be the last index for the columns. So that means there would be five columns in our table. So we just gotta remember that these numbers we put in the parentheses still correspond to the last index of the respective dimension and not the actual dimension itself. Let's do a couple of examples of declaring two dimensional arrays, just so we can get a better idea of how to do it. So here's one two dimensional array. Uh, this is called FQS. We see the in parentheses, we have four comma two, and then we have as double. So this is gonna be a two dimensional array of doubles. And since we have a four in the first number, that means that we have five rows. The two as the second number means we have three columns. So there's one example. Uh, we can do something like this. 
we have Av Temp 2014. That's a perfectly legit uh, array name. And then we have uh, parentheses 49, then 11. As then we have integer. So this means we have a two-dimensional array of integers. And remember, the numbers in the parentheses gives us the last index of the dimensions. So this means we have 50 rows and 12 columns. Here's another example. Uh, we have an array called names where we have 99 and 1 in the parentheses. This is going to be an array of strings. Oh, I should say a two-dimensional array of strings. Uh, here we have 100 rows and two columns. And then let's do one more. Uh, so here we have an array, a two-dimensional array called alpha array, where in parentheses we have 25 and 1. And this is going to be of type care. So we have a two-dimensional array of characters where we would have 26 rows and two columns. I do want to mention that whenever we declare an array, the elements of the array will be initialized to their default values. Just like with one-dimensional arrays, depending on what the data type is for the array, the respective elements are going to be given the default value for that type. So for instance, if we're dealing with integers and doubles, all the elements of these arrays are going to be initialized to zero. If we're dealing with uh, character arrays, the elements there are going to be initialized to the null character. And then if we're dealing with strings, all the elements of those arrays would be initialized to the default value of the null string. Let's go back to one of our examples and actually see what happens when we declare a two-dimensional array. So here we have uh, an array called FQS, and this is going to stand for first quarter sales. So this is actually going to correlate to our earlier example of the sales from the business with all the, the electronics and the, the sales for January, February, and March. So as we said earlier, uh, this is going to create an array with five rows and three columns. But what happens when we actually look at the individual elements? Well, the way we would represent an element is similar to how we deal with one-dimensional arrays in that we would have the name of the array, a parentheses, and then the index of the particular element. We do the same thing for two-dimensional arrays, except now we have two indices separated by a comma. But the same rules apply. So for example, we need to make sure that the first index is between zero and the last index of it. So in this case, we go from zero to four. And then the second index has to be between zero and the last index of the second dimension. So in this case, it has to be between zero and two. But let's look at the actual uh, layout of all the elements here. So we would see that the first element of this array would be FQS 0, 0. And of course, the last element of the array is going to be FQS 4, 2. So we can uh, access any element. And let's assume that we were storing all the values in the respective elements. So now if we want to get a specific value in this array, we would just put in the name of the array, the parentheses, and then whichever row and column number we want. So I think before we were trying to find the uh, February sales for tablets. So we see that is at this spot right here, which means if we wanted to get that value, we would need to, to get the value of SQS where we would have the uh, column number, or I should say the row number be three and the column number be one. So that would give us the February sales for tablets.